What's up, guys? Um, this is a AT Mega 328 microcontroller from Atmel, uh, which is commonly used on Arduino boards. Now, it's a great chip, but it's limited to how much power it can sink, as are all microcontrollers. The chip gives a generous 20 milliamps max per pin, and a max total of 50 milliamps for all the pins combined. So in order to run high current devices like motors, big relays, and high power LEDs, you have to somehow amplify the power from the chip, and that's where the transistor comes in. Using this basic schematic with parts obtainable from Radio Shack, you can create a digital switch that will draw a milliamp or so while driving a much higher current load. This allows all of the pins to take control of high current things while not going over the max current. In cases where you need to drive an inductive load, like a motor, mechanical relay, or transformer, you have to add a protection diode to protect the transistor and microcontroller from the high current voltage spike produced when they are turned off. In this video, I will show you how to construct both types of circuits. Alright, we're going to first start by collecting parts. You're going to need to get your 2N2222A transistor. It's a lot of twos. Uh, it's in the video description. Uh, you're going to need a 10K resistor. Um, that's also in the video description. Um, you can use this in place of the 1K. It's not going to hurt it for both the inductive and the LED schematic. You're going to need a 470 ohm resistor for the LED. Um, if you choose to do that, uh, you need a diode if you choose to do the inductive schematic to drive inductive loads. Um, and you're going to need an LED. Um, you're going to need uh, two power cables about uh, nine inches long, red and black. Um, you're going to need a yellow cable to connect the transistor circuit um, to the digital pin on the Arduino. You're going to need breadboard jumpers to connect um, the pins on the breadboard together. Um, and here's all the parts together. So the first step is we're going to connect the red and black power cables to the breadboard. It's a pretty simple step. Then we're going to place the transistor um, with the flat back toward the camera. So as you can see. Then add a resistor, the 470 ohm resistor on the side, like so. Then add the yellow um, breadboard jumper and connect it to um, the positive bus. Then add a green cable um, between that pin. And another green cable on the leftmost pin to ground. Um, then this is the 10K resistor. You connect that to the middle pin and then connect it to an uh, unused breadboard por uh, portion on the other side. This is another view of the same thing. All right. Then you can connect the LED. Make sure it's the correct polarity. If it's not and it doesn't work, just switch it around. And there's another view. Add the circuit. All right, now now you can add the yellow jumper cable to the uh, resistor, and you can connect um, the red and black power cable. Now you can connect it to the positive five volt regulated or the raw if you want the input voltage. Um, connect the yellow cable to digital pin thirteen, um, and that concludes the LED schematic. Now we're going to modify it to do the inductive load. Um, remove the resistor and the, uh, yeah, just the resistor. Then add a blue jumper in place of it because we do not need a resistor in this circuit. Then add the diode, like so, between the uh, green and blue cable. Then go ahead and um, grab a red and black cable, uh, an extra set, and connect it there. And here's another view. Now those red and black cables are what you would hook up to a relay or a motor or whatever you want. All right, this is the finished circuit for driving an LED. Um, check it out. All right, there it goes. It's on for two seconds, off for one, off, on for two. Now this LED is fairly bright. If I turn off the
lights. You can tell it's a pretty bright LED and it's lighting up quite bright. So um, that's probably hitting a good deal of current if you drove it directly from the pin. But thanks to the transistor amplification circuit, um, it's drawing very little from the Arduino and it's drawing it all through the transistor and the power supply coming from the wall. This is the uh, transistor circuit, um, but the only thing that has been changed is it's been connected to pin 9 for a PWM signal from the digital port so I can fade and control uh, how bright the LED is. So let's test it out. It's fading. So if I turn off the lights, you'll be able to see it better. And that's uh, an LED fading through PWM. So this circuit does work with um, PWM signals to the transistor. Alright guys, uh, this is the uh, finished um, transistor circuit and I'm driving an inductive load. In this case it's a small DC motor. So let's give it a try, see what happens. Alright, um, it's connected to pin 13 and it will turn this on for two seconds and then turn it off for one. So, let's put the jumper back in. Alright, this is the um, transistor circuit uh, driving an inductive load, but it is connected to pin 9 for PWM control. And I'm now going to connect the power. And what this will do is it will um, make the motor start from nothing, gradually work it up to its max potential, and then bring it right back down over and over and over. So, alright, get started. So this is a uh, great way to do cheap, simple, um, one-way um, speed control. Um, you don't have to go out and buy an expensive driver. It's just uh, a transistor and a diode and one resistor plus a little bit of wiring.